Unveiling time. Are we ready? Oh, oh, oh. Wow! Oh, oh my gosh! Holy crud! Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host Dustin and this week I am so excited to be bringing you the unveiling of the new Cower Gripen. This thing is an absolute beast. This is a uh, special version that Doug made for me modeled after the Razor Crest which is the ship on the Mandalorian uh, TV show. I'm a Star Wars geek uh, so for anybody who's not into Star Wars I apologize but the look on this thing is absolutely insane insane they nailed every little ounce of it from the pickups to the setup to the design to the the paint job i just i love everything about this guitar but honestly me sitting here ranting and raving about it is not going to mean a thing i think we should jump over to the board and let you guys hear what this sounds like and i'll kind of walk you through some of the features and the benefits as we go so join me over there all right, so before we dive into the sounds of this guitar, I wanna take a minute just to appreciate the aesthetics of it and the design elements that Doug put into the Griffin because there's a lot of stuff going on here. So first of all, of course, the paint job. Josh did such an amazing job here. You can see this kind of like age flecking finish to kind of give it that Mandalorian razor crest look and feel. He nailed this. I absolutely love what they did with their pit guard lasering. They can do some really, really neat custom shop stuff with their pit guard. And on the back, the paint is even better. They did kind of this like war wound kind of blast scarring on here. And you don't feel it. It's all in the actual paint itself. And then they've sealed over the top of it with the nitro. But it is just absolutely phenomenal finish work. And, and the paint job, I couldn't be happier. The looks and the aesthetics are amazing. But what got really clever here is the way that Doug designed this. So obviously it's got some inspiration from the like Banshees and, and that kind of style guitar from the past. And it even has a similar block to his Banshee model. So you'll notice that the Banshees, if you've ever looked at them, they have a straight block that comes back through the guitar and then you have your wings on the side. Here, instead of bringing a straight block back, what you see is this little V wing and this V comes through the middle and goes all the way to the tip of the guitar down here. And then you have two wings coming out of the side. And what that creates is on top, your wings actually setting on two little grooved notches. Now, when you're holding it in your hands, that doesn't really mean much to you. But when you're sitting playing, trying to do like a recording session, anything like that, that actually plays into a lot of the ergonomics. Because what happens here is when I set this on my lap and we've got these little grooves here, that actually kind of grooves into my leg and creates a little area where I can let go of the guitar and it makes it a nice ergonomic design so that when I'm ready to return to playing position, I'm ready to go, it's all right here good to go, no problems. That is really, really clever from an ergonomics perspective, but also just from an everyday feel. When you're in a long recording session, you want it to be able to do something like this where you're talking, you're getting, you know, trying to give hand signals to somebody, trying to tell them what's going on. You don't want to have to worry about the guitar falling forward, falling on the, on the ground. I think that in and of itself is really, really clever the way that they've designed that. So kudos to Doug in the design elements, the features, the look, everything about this just phenomenal but none of that really matters a lot of it comes down to the sound of a guitar right so what i think is amazing here what doug's done is taken three lawler la prima mini humbuckers and for those who aren't familiar with the la prima they're a phenomenal humbucker they're a newer one in lawler's range i think it's been the last couple of years but the la prima is a little bit brighter than a traditional humbucker it has a really great treble side. It has a nice tight bass range. And then the mids are pulled back just a little bit. But it is it is just amazing. It's almost microphonic in the attack. Like it, it just, when you dig into it, it really responds and sounds phenomenal. So I think what I should do is let you hear some clean tones and then we'll turn on a little dirt pedal so you can hear what it sounds like with some dirt as well. Um, so right now I've just got it in the bridge position. Um, here's my clean tone. Just a 
a real beautiful tight bass like I said but you can still hear that treble sound See, it doesn't wash out the treble like a lot of humbuckers would, make it kind of sound like it's off back in there in the distance. These don't do that, and that is amazing. But, I said this is humbuckers and there's three of them. Instead of doing a three-way switch, what Doug did was a five-way switch a la a Strat. So what happens when you pull this back, you're actually splitting the, the uh, neck and the middle position, and this sounds very much like one of my favorite Strats. <laughs> Just that nice, classic kind of Jimmy sound. I've just always loved that tone. I love playing in position two on a Strat, and this really nails that tone, especially when it's clean. You got just a little reverb on. Ah, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Now the middle position is really interesting because here traditionally you're kind of using a regular bridge pickup, if you will, but in the middle position, this can kind of do lead on its own. You notice it's a little snappier. that sound it's just a gorgeous sound and when i get to the distortion here in a little bit you can hear you could actually rock some lead on this pickup with the, with the distortion on but by putting it in the mid there you're giving yourself a whole other level to go to now we can go back to the next position and split these two and you've got that final bridge pickup and the middle position together <laughs> Now compare that to position two. I know I'm probably flipping position two and position four. I'm notorious for doing that. So this is your neck and your middle position. Here's your bridge in your middle. Here, that's just a little bit more treble forward. It brings things out just a little bit more. But then we go into the bridge pickup itself and you get this spank. That does not sound like a humbucker to me. That sounds like a killer telly pickup. I mean, that is just spanky. It's just got a real percussive attack to it. Like, absolutely love that sound. I think that sounds absolutely killer. But the beauty of that is, is by having those five different pickup ranges, this is kind of your one-stop shop guitar. If you're a touring musician and you can only take one or two guitars with you on the road, sometimes you want that heavier humbucker sound. Sometimes you want the lightness, the airiness, and you want that treble attack that a single coil like a Strat or especially a Tele can give you. I think what Doug's done here is capture all three of these. And by using these three pickups in particular, they just play off of each other so well and sound so good together. Now, let's add in a little bit of a, I'm going to you to use the uh, Herculean uh, from Mythos Pedals just to give it a little extra drive. We'll start off with the neck pickup. You can hear that bassier, heavier bass pickup. It just really... And if we turn our volume down to about five. Bring it up to about seven. I just love that. It's got a real, real bassy kind of snap to it. We bring it down one position.
three times the mid. Now bring it out of the mid, and the mid, I mean, seriously, you could totally rock this. Down one position. that position but I'm gonna tell you when we get back down to that bridge That is just an insane lead tone. It sounds so good and it still works with rhythm. So what did you think? I, I wish I could do this justice. I, I know this is just a, a quick smattering of some, some fast sounds that I recorded after opening this. So this is just my initial kind of impressions of the guitar, but the fact that it weighs six pounds and three ounces, I mean, that is nothing. It weighs light as air. I, I think the hardware accounts for a vast majority of it. I think part of that, the way that Doug designed this, just being so lightweight, so ergonomic, yet to have such a deep, rich sound, um, especially with those Lawler La Primas in there. Um, if you were going to do a custom order of one of these, I would highly, highly recommend doing the La Primas. They're phenomenal. I, I can't say enough about them. And especially with that five-way switch to give you those almost Strat-type tones while still being humbuckers, I just... Ah. Excellent, excellent, excellent work. Uh, I can't say enough about them. Um, so I'm, I'm super impressed. My initial feelings on this, I'm just absolutely sold. And it's not just a pretty paint job and a, a beautiful looking guitar. I really think for form, for function, Doug nailed it. Now, I know some of you may not want the more metal looking, you know, it's, it's definitely got that traditional kind of like rock and roll, heavy metal feel to it and look. But I got to say, playing it, holding it up, like as you walk around the stage, um, I think if you got the right color, if you got something that looked nice, you could pull this off in any kind of genre. And with those pickups, like I said in the video, um, I, I genuinely think if I could only have one guitar at a gig, but I needed to play a lot of different types of music, this just makes sense. I mean, you're getting all those tones. You could pull off jazz with this. You could pull off heavy metal with this. You could pull off rock and roll. You could pull off country. It can do every single thing that you want it to do. And there's not a lot of guitars out there. I have some amazing tellies, but I don't have a telly that can do everything that well. Like it's just, it's phenomenal. So hats off to Doug everybody on the team like you guys nailed this I, I can't thank you enough for putting this together um wow just absolutely wow and for those who are out there uh, hunting for one of these i know there's several up uh, available right now i know my paint job's a little weird and a little different than everybody else's but there's some killer stuff out there um my friends at palin who i have to thank for for doing this show um we're in episode 52 right now. So we've done this for one year as of this episode. And uh, it's been just an absolutely wild ride. But I was down visiting them the other day and they have a pink sparkle one in stock. And I, I've never been like a pink sparkle kind of guy. I've got some pink guitars, but not the, the overly sparkly uh, kind of pink. Um, but I kind of fell in love with this one and it's super lightweight, feels really good, but th that pink sparkle just looks killer. So, uh, if you're on the hunt for one, give that one a look. It's, it's pretty cool. Last, uh, at least as of this filming, I believe it's still in stock. So I'll throw the link to their website down below. Uh, so please go hit them up if you have any interest in that. And at the same time too, uh, I'm going to be posting more videos about this. Um, the... <laughs> 
uh, Josh over Cower actually made a killer video that has uh, him playing the Mandalorian theme song. And uh, I've got a link to that over on my Instagram. We're going to post some other fun content over there um, with this guitar. So uh, f f please just uh, uh, join us over there. I'll put a little link down here as well so you can hop over there and we'll be adding tons of content. This is not the last you're going to see of this guitar. I have a feeling I'm going to be using this on a ton of demos with a ton of different pedals trying to get some different sounds out of here. So, so if you want to see more of this, Put links below, uh, other sounds you'd like me to try to make with it, other effects you'd like me to use with it. I'm glad to do that. Just comment down below and I'll be glad to put together anything that you're interested in hearing with this guitar. So, well, thank you so much for coming out for our 52nd episode. I really, really appreciate it. Join us in the coming weeks. We're going to be doing a ton of new pedal demos over the next few weeks, as well as one more... Uh, new guitar that's going to be joining the ranks in a few weeks that I'm really, really excited about, but we'll save that unveil for then. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see you next week. Take care and have a good one.